sorry, I had to cut the camera off because there were some people around and then it got busy, classes got out and everything, so uh, about half an hour later, we're doing the freight elevator. Let's do the freight elevator. Nope, somebody, somebody's using it. We are out and we are going on a road trip today. Today is October 15th, 2019, 6 16 a.m. And we are gonna go check up on some elevators. This is gonna be a two-day trip. Take up today and tomorrow. Glue to hotel hotel stay and plenty of elevators. With that being said, I just realized something I need to first thing I need to do is go get cash after. I get some things to fill up, got some pop, and my camera, packed a couple of lunches to save money. Everything's loaded, ready to go. Let's do this. First stop is the ATM, wherever that is. Now, once again, it should be made clear that I'm not looking through the camera as I'm driving, I'm focusing on the road, but if you saw my last road trip video from who knows how long that was, ago that was. That should be nothing new. Anyway. Here we go. So while I remembered to buckle in myself, I probably should have thought to buckle in my backpack. Always buckle up. So just a crazy thought that just kind of popped into my head. I find it really annoying when ATMs ask you if you want another transaction, because a lot of people will tend to forget that. And then basically what will happen is that the next person, that's just a theft waiting to happen. There's the link to US 77, but which is faster, but we're gonna go this way, which is a little bit more scenic. Or maybe not at night, I don't know. I'll just let the camera roll for a while. Approaching US 77. While well, we're stopped at the light, I just remembered something. I gotta reset the mileage counter, so wherever we're at here is gonna be zero. Alright, the other light turned yellow, so, and red, so. Any minute now, come on. Oh, lovely. Construction. This is going to be a fun journey. I'm already running into problems. Well, as 
far as the route we're all right so I just realized I just remembered something while we're stopped at this red light should probably take a minute to decide to, sh to tell you exactly where we're going so the first thing we're going to do is we're going down to Kent to K-State and we're going to check up on them see what's going on down at the library there which if you read or watched my video about that you should know that and I'm going to have to get over and quickly I just realized he's going to let me over so we're good And anyway, and here's the lane ending. But as I was saying, we're going down to we're going to start by going down to K State. We're going to go check up on the library, and as well as a few vintage elevators down there, just to see if they're still original or not. May or may not get a video. I wouldn't at this point. Don't expect that I'm actually going to film anything there. I'm just more or less going to check if there's any new developments. I'll definitely update you guys on that. If I feel if I'm feeling like it, I will film some vintage. I'll, I'll film refilm some of the vintage elevators there. However, I am pressed for time as I kind of got off to it ten minutes ten minutes later than I wanted to. But ultimately, I want to go down and get the University of Kansas today, and then try to and then I'm going to be planning to go up to Des Moines tonight. Probably I booked a hotel for the evening. And then we're going to go down to the University of Iowa, which I still humbly say, go Big Red. And film some elevators there, because there's some vintage stuff down there I want to go check out. And come to think of it, Ames is only a half hour north of Des Moines, so we might stop at Iowa State as well. But with the timing of it being overnight, I don't know if that's going to be possible. I'm just going to have to play that one by ear. Anyway, we're out in the open highway now, so I guess I'll update you when, whenever I feel like it next, so. Oop, one other thing I just quickly forgot. We are 38, almost 39 miles into the trip. Time is 7.05, and we are moving. I got just the cruise control. This is fine. We're stuck behind an idiot who still thinks the speed limit through here is 60. When back in July of 2018, it was raised to 65. Uh, dang it. Can't pass him. But we will. Eventually. Andrew will probably reference that time as something special. But hey, we got a sunrise. So we took an eastern turn. I'm just going to film a little and let you enjoy it. to each other 48.8 miles into the trip I guess we'll take a look at a small town Dollar General over there One small town, Nebraska. Gotta have a Casey's. It's <laughs> City Park. Two 
228 for gas? Dang. I don't even remember what I paid back in Lincoln. That's pretty good. Why more yen? Huh. Looks like a standard roadside motel that you would probably see in the Anyway, we we're out of town, so that's it for this update. All right, 723A. Whoa! Holy crap! Dude! Dude! Seven ish miles into the trip. We are one mile away from the Kansas border. It, some guy just turned in front of me. Turned left in front of me. And... All right, let's watch this. Let's watch the sign go past. We cross into Kansas. That's the Welcome to Nebraska sign that from the behind. And here we are in Kansas, Marshall County line. Welcome to Kansas. Still on 77 South. And we are moving well. Oh, we got a bit more sunrise now. said this is a very narrow road I'm gonna have to probably won't be any updates since I don't know if I'll do one in Marysville or not okay here's a nice here's a nice more of a sun sunrise 735 a.m. 69 miles ish into the trip we're in Marysville stuck behind a slow poke. Actually, maybe not. We're going the speed limit, so probably shouldn't complain too loudly. Oh, car wash. Ooh, that's really cool. Take a look at these Pepsi logos. Pepsi Cola Bottling Company. They have a distribution ish, I think, plant down here. Yep, distribution plant down here. Alright, I gotta drive because I don't want to miss my turn. Actually, you know what? Slight little change of plans. We're gonna take a drive through the downtown. This is downtown Marysville, Kansas. Now we'll go this way. This is a nice little town. Of course, nothing's open yet except maybe the pharmacy because it's still early in the morning. Got a brick street. more Pepsi all right I'm gonna make a turn around here oh you know what let's get a better look at those Pepsi logos thirty four to thirty nine thank you very much semi for ruining that shot and again it's kind of expected all right gotta go Gotta move. 
There's the water tower and yeah, you know, oh the cameras hang on, I'm gonna have to adjust. There we go. Focus there. And we're moving, but there's the Pony Express thing on that water tower. And I can't see it. No, let's go take it, let's go check out the other side. Uh, we went this way already. I'm Turned one too soon. This is a nice little downtown area. Lots of historic charm to it. Now I'm hoping that this here is US 77, which it looks like it is. So we are good to go. I don't know what they're doing here. Oh, okay, I see. On the other side, they're repaving this. I guess that's what they were warning about, about a low or a narrow width. Road narrows, I knew it. I didn't show it on I didn't show that on camera though. Dear. It looks like this got massively flooded. Anyway, 750, 82 miles into the trip, and we are in another small town. I don't know what the name of it is, and we'll find out. Blue Rapids, Kansas. There's the moon. You know, I think I'm gonna just, but yeah, flooding down there. Speed checked by radar, I think I better focus. And speaking of focusing, we're at school, it's a school year, so we gotta do a school speed, and I guess we'll take a look at this small town while we're at it. All right, sorry about that abrupt cutoff, but there was a policeman there monitoring and patrolling, so. Didn't think filming would be the best idea. There's a baseball field. Just a little bit of the town. All right, let's move. Looks like 77 has joined Highway Kansas Highway 9, so. Ooh, woo! Here we go. Let's move.
probably should have planned a little bit better with the school zones because I forgot Kansas has a lot of high schools out in the middle of nowhere. Nebraska's not like that at all. Well, with some exceptions. This one approached me quickly. We're actually we're gonna we're 77 is gonna turn right and we're going east on 24. So we're gonna still get situated. So now we're on US 24 eastbound. Manhattan is 13 miles away. We're 115 and a half miles into the trip. 8:23 a.m. Fall goes well. I'm guessing my ETA is probably gonna be about nine o'clock. 8.45, 9 o'clock. Can't remember how long it actually is. Actually, if it's only 13 miles, it'll probably be sooner than that. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera off because we're going straight into the sunlight. And we are parked. I remembered where I parked last time, and sure enough, open spot again. Now, in case I haven't made it clear, my, the main purpose of me coming here is not to get retakes. I'm not going to go refilm everything. Instead, what I'm, this is just simply a revisit, meaning that I'm just going to check up on a few elevators. Not necessarily get any videos, but this is just to walk around, see what's changed. See if anything is worth filming and film only the major changes, if any. Anyway, let's go. Also, I forgot to mention something. I'm wearing a Husker sweatshirt, so I'm going to have to take that off as just a little piece of uncommon sense. Don't wear gear from an opposing school when filming on a college campus. Got a jacket. I came prepared for that. Or maybe if it's a nice day, I won't even need it. So something I should probably clarify about what I was saying. I'm talking about specific, because I know I'm going to catch flack in the comments for it. I'm talking specifically about when you're coming to a campus to film elevators. If you're coming for a sporting event to root on your team on the road, and want to film elevators on the side, then that's okay. It looks like they're fixing that, but... Here's a best of 2018 retake. This one has an epic motor. Anderson Priest Elevator. Let's go up to four. Here we go. I don't know if, I don't remember if that means somebody wants to use it or if it just always switches like that. That's 
find out. Nope, we've been called. Nice cab. Too bad it got modernized. It's got a nice motor. Going down at one. Now with the mic being on top of the camera, I don't know if that will be as good as it would have been on my old one. So I've noticed the audio quality could use some work on this camera. But that gives me an idea that I'm gonna have to come back and try later. Or even just do a side-by-side -side comparison of the old versus the new. This would be a good elevator to do that on. There's the phone. Button goes out. Sorry about the abrupt start, but there was a class starting, but look at this. We are still original. Let's have a listen. Notice something. There is no phone in this elevator. They just have an emergency number you can call. But I don't think you'll need one. Let's see if we can. I had to cut the camera off because there were some people around and then it got busy, classes got out and everything, so 
Uh, about half an hour later, we're doing the freight elevator. Let's do the freight elevator. Nope, somebody, somebody's using it. So we're gonna have to go find it. Found the elevator. And someone left the gate open, that's why it wouldn't go. Let's take it up to four. down to the basement. Here's a cab view. This is a nice vintage elevator. Five thousand pound capacity. Anderson Priest. And look at these awesome fixtures. I'm loving it. I don't think you'll need that phone, but then again. We are not opening that door up. However, Now let's not make the same mistake the last person made and shut the gate. All right, let's pull the door closed. Uh, hold on a second. This strap needs to be on the inside or the next person isn't gonna be able to open the door. There we go. There's another freight elevator here, but because it does go down into a restricted area, I'm not going to ride it. You can kind of see inside. It's nice. It's vintage. Can't see the button panel from here. Ooh. So, man, that was exciting. You saw some of those updates. Anyway, a little updates on the library because I didn't get any videos in there. The entrance elevator that I filmed is more than likely gone. None of the three elevators were accessible. So, and the reason is only because the first floor is the only floor that's open right now. The main bank of elevators, you could clearly hear them that they were operating and they were running. I don't know if they're getting modernized or what, but they were walled off. So I couldn't even see them. And the stacks elevator is still in an area that's under construction. So no updates on that. Anyway, it's time to head to the University of Kansas now, which is a campus I have not filmed before. Well, okay, I should mention I have filmed it before with my old camera, but I haven't uploaded any of the takes. And this is going to be a full retake of everything with my new camera that hopefully will replace the takes that I got with my old camera. Anyway, with that being said, let's go. Oh, the 
back out first. All right, and we are moving on. It is 10.32 a.m., 130 and a half miles into the trip. Uh, I got, they gotta stop, so why am I stopping? Here we go. Stopping once again because now that we have light to do it, buckle in my backpack so it doesn't go anywhere. So now getting out of here is going to be a little bit tricky because I want to continue going south, but I don't want to go back the way that I came. So we're going to take a right turn here. We're going to head through the main part of downtown, Manhattan. There's Manhattan Christian College, which is private. I've not attempted to film at something like that, so... But today's not going to be that day because I got to move on. Oh dear. I don't know I want to do this. Maybe somebody will let me in. Probably have been doing. All right, let's see what he wants to do. I think the black car behind him is going to let him in. Let me in. Zipper merges are a wonderful thing. filming the way that we're going out. Here we go, now we're back on US 24 and we got an arrow. Perfect timing. Kansas 177 will take us to I-70. Really hope I think I might be in the dang it. I'm gonna have to turn in. Here's the Manhattan Town Center, which doesn't look like it has anything for elevators, and the J.C. Penney is one floor. I've been in there, I was in there on an earlier trip when I came in 2018. Alright, right turn on red can be done here. 
Let's go. 177 South. All right. I guess I will update you when we're at the interstate. All right, I missed my turn onto 177, but in the meantime, I discovered a parking garage that has an elevator. And it looks like it's an Otis, but we're gonna reset to downstairs to go right in. That looks like it goes to the hotel. We are not gonna go there today. Let's get the elevator. Still there's the Hilton Garden and parking garage. Actually, you know what? I should probably be starting this as a separate video. This is the elevator at the Hilton Garden and parking garage, Manhattan, Kansas. Let's go up to four. There we go. That is an annoyingly long buzzer. Go down to one. This sounds like a Gen 2. You can hear the motor whirring pretty loudly. Fixtures, pretty basic. Elevator, I wonder where the, oh wait, maybe the other two elevators are in the hotel. Yeah, that's definitely MRL based on the noise it makes. And that's it. 10.45 a.m. and let's get back on the road. Here we go. Fortunately, free parking today. So that was a plus and allowed me to check this out. Like it's gonna try to force me to go right, but all right. Let's not miss the turn this time. Ocean 177. This is where I meant to turn right, and now we're turning left. And this kind of goes to show that things don't seem to necessarily go as planned. Fortunately, that worked out, and I got an elevator video out of the deal. getting on to 177. I guess now I'm certain the next update will be at I-70. All right, again, this trip has, I should probably have mentioned by now that nothing I say really holds true for more than about two minutes because I'm actually going to do a diesel doocy thing and go look at the scenic overlook over here. This is the one south of Manhattan on Kansas 177. This is not the same one Andrew did in his road trip. So let's see what we can let's see what we can see. Tall grass prairie. Here's a good 
let's do a quick, let's do a nice slow pan and enjoy it. highway down there. I don't know what town that is over there. It's not Manhattan. Maybe Google Maps will help me when I get home. Anyway, I'm just going to do some, anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to do some still pictures and I got to get moving because I am behind schedule. All right, we are moving. Since this is a scenic byway in Kansas, we're just going to film. Like so. Enjoy. through Topeka. And we are now on our way to Lawrence. It's 11 o'clock a.m. and we are getting on I-70. Looks like we might have some construction. Looks like this is just going to be mostly interstate, so probably not going to have an update until we get to Topeka. So, for the time being, I'm just going to shut off the camera, sit back, and enjoy the drive. Alright, 11.32 a.m. We are now entering Topeka. We're just going to drive straight through. Not really much is going to happen here. I've already filmed some elevators in the downtown area and on the west end of town, Westridge Mall, which at least in terms of the shot date have already been posted, so go search for them on my channel or I don't know. Maybe I'll link them up in the... Maybe I'll link them up there. I don't know what I'm going to do, but just wanted to give you a little update that we're entering Topeka. We'll go from there. All right, 11.38 a.m. and around this corner here is going to be downtown. Uh, I don't remember exactly who it was who likes the downtown shots, but well, here you go. Really not much to it. This is a 
narrow road. Tight corners. thought of one other little pit stop that I want to do. I want to go visit the Kansas State Capitol, see what they have for elevators. So we're going to do that. So that's one I've been meaning to do for a while. And whoo, dang, talk about short notice on the exit. do this. I've got time. I don't need to be there until don't want to don't need to be there until noon. Okay, that was interesting. So I was hoping to find some gated elevators there that were manually operated that I saw on YouTube. The bad news is is they've all gotten modernized. The good news but there is good news though. Have a look. This is the Northwest elevator at the Kansas State Capitol and based on the looks of this it's broken, and we can't ride it. And too bad because it has C.J. Anderson fixtures. Well, that kind of sucks. Oh well. This is the Northeast elevator, the Kansas State Capitol, Topeka, Kansas. C.J. Anderson. Let's go up to five. Here we go. Let's go down to the ground. No, I don't think they're trying to determine a brand. Nice elevator. Looks like it was modernized at some point, but not sure who with. CJ Anderson. Well, I should probably mention I'm not sure what it originally was. To notice, I saw the interlock. That's it. This is the Southeast Elevator, Kansas State Capitol, Topeka, Kansas. And we're gonna have to wait for it because it just went upstairs. Here it comes. Let's go up to five. Here we go. Look at this button panel. 
It's almost identical to the one in the Nebraska State Capitol. Except that one I think was made by GAL. Two is locked. Very nice caps. Mirror image of the Northeast. And that one says ThyssenKrupp elevator. The Northeast elevator said Otis. That's interesting. So I'll label this one as a ThyssenKrupp. That's it. And the Southwest elevator is a no-go. But wait a minute. You know what, by the looks of this, I think these are just getting modernized. But I don't think this one's ready yet. It's like... That's it. All right, I do want to come back to the Southeast elevator for a minute, because I think I'm not mistaken. That thing still works. You know what? I really like the fact that they are working to preserve those elevators with CJ Anderson fixtures, so good job to them. Anyway, we are about ready to get on the Kansas Turnpike, so we will film that taking place. Last free exit right here. Now, I have taken the back roads. I've taken US 40, and really that's just slow as all get out, so it's pretty much worth the few extra dollars net needed to take the turnpike. I've also taken US 24, which just runs northeast of Kansas City. Sorry, not Kansas City. It runs from Topeka to Kansas City. That's just out of the way where I'm trying to go. So we're taking the best route. It's 12:13. Yeah, we're behind schedule again, but maybe we'll get a head start after Lawrence. It's coming up any minute now. Yep, there's the toll plaza. Take ticket on the right. We don't have a K tag, obviously. There are no toll roads in Nebraska. which one to go in. Ticket or K-Tag, here we go. All right, let's go. So, I'm doing this without looking at the camera here. So we're at Topeka I-70, we're heading down on it. So it looks like it could, the most it will probably cost is about, at the US 59 exit will be $1.50. That's why you pay attention to driving and not the camera. My lane just ended. All right. Here we are on the turnpike, so the next update will probably be in Lawrence, or when we get off. So now taking the time to accurately look at the ticket, it is going to be $1.25, because I know which exit I'm going to get off is going to be the US 59 South exit to Iowa Street. Anyway, 12.24. We are approaching the first of the three Lawrence exits. This is not the one I want right here. Just drive a little and 
go from there. And here's a sign for the University of Kansas, which is where we're going. Twelve twenty-eight at p.m. Should be getting off sometime around pretty soon. self-pay so we're not gonna have an attendant for this one all right hang on this is gonna take a minute get things ready goes in. I think it goes this way. Dollar twenty-five. Thank you. Look how they have the, the stop wa a walk light button for that. All right, here we go. We are now in Lawrence. All right, next stop will probably be when I find a place to park. All right, we're parked. Let's go. Ah, it's noon-ish. I think it's time we eat some lunch first, so. All right, for those of you food enthusiasts who are interested in what I packed for lunch, this is part of tomorrow's, but I had it in this one already. I got some kohlrabi, red cabbage, I've got some honey crisp apples, which are really good, as well as some as well as some pretzels. These are very salty and very good. Didn't exactly plan did not plan on drinks because I didn't have room here. And besides, I've got the pop that I bought back in Lincoln. It's now empty, so I'm going to have to replace it on campus. All right, so after driving around some while I ate my lunch, I got a closer spot to park, so let's go in and let's go film some elevators. All right, so we're here in the Anschutz Library, and I just want to give you an update on some things here. And that's that I actually discovered the battery situation. What the? Why does it say it's going down when we're mowing up? It says we're on two. We're on four. Oh, wait. That's door open. Wait a minute. Watch this. It's a Westing house. So, as I was saying, my battery is flashing red and apparently charging it in the car is not going to be sufficient enough to maintain it throughout filming an entire campus. And so that would mean I would have to sit for at least two hours while it charges, and that's time I can't have, can't spare. So I'm just going to upload the takes I had from 2018 on my old camera and just kill some time here, look for some new stuff. Anyway, here's a ride on this elevator again. Good. 
Nope, I think that indicator is just stuck. But that's frustrating. The door closed is supposed to be on the right. Alright. But now that I'm thinking of it, there are actually some elevators here. I did not get in 2018, so we'll do those. Go to go up to LL. I think that's locked. That's interesting. Well, the reason LL is the highest floor is because that's actually LL to a different building, which is why it's locked off. This one's pretty basic. Really isn't all that much special about it. Fixtures, phone, basic impulse. It's a true Dover. Blue shaft equipment. That's why LL's locked. So kind of going along with that other idea of, by the way, this is the other elevator and shuts library. So kind of just going with the idea of, I'm not gonna refilm everything here with my new camera. That means I've got some time to spare because I don't need to be in, I don't need to be at my next stop until like nine tonight. So I think what I'm gonna do I'll wait till the door opens. Why is this taking so long to level? I don't think it used to do that. So as I was saying, what I think I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to sit and let my camera charge for a while, just so that we're up and ready to go. And then maybe at about 3.30, 4 o'clock, I'm gonna head down to Kansas City and, we'll, and then we're gonna head up to Des Moines, Iowa. And then we'll be on our way to, our, to the hotel for tonight. Then we'll be on to University of Iowa. We'll do one vending machine. Also, another thing I was thinking of is that there was one bank of elevators I did discover get modernized since my last take, so that will definitely get a new video. Anyway, I'm, I'll just kind of alternate between charging my camera and looking for new elevators between now and then. Not gonna do anything serious, so. We need to have correct change for this machine, so. Fortunately, I do. Right here. Two dollars needed. Got the two. Come on. I'm 
are seriously going to be this way. Come on. It says correct change when lit. Please don't. Ugh. Great. Well, I think that just for the time being means it ain't gonna take cash. Even if when I do try to do correct change. So we're gonna have to do a swipe. Also help maybe if I swiped it the right way. Make selection. Obviously, you know what I'm gonna get. Well, maybe not. It's a tough decision. I'm gonna get this guy. What the? I don't think it gave me anything. Better not have charged me. Let's try that again. Make selection. Authorizing request. There we go. I think it just timed out. Come on. And these are the elevators at Haworth Hall, University of Kansas. And these got modernized. Go up to eight. Here we go. We cannot get off on this floor, and that's why. Not that there's anything special up here anyway. All right, let's head down. Nice cap. I can't remember what the old elevators were like. I know the original, this is at least its second modernization. Send you up without me in it. Though I do like the instant door close. Don't get me wrong on that. Here we go. Yeah, little classic leveling. Again, the instant door close is nice to have. Ooh. Don't remember if those were actually the lanterns or not. That one. But 
we're not going to go through there. We got it right here. Look at this. And it's out of service. Well, dang it. I was really hoping this one would stay original. Ah, well. Uh, at least I got the old take of it. Anyway. Uh, you know what? I think this elevator might be permanently decommissioned. There's the counterweight sitting on the buffer spring. Blech. I do not like the look of what's in there, and this is what tips me off to it. This elevator is non-functional. It ain't even on the map. I really hope, at some point, they can get this thing working again. Well, here it is on the upper floor. Basically, I think this elevator might have been permanently decommissioned. I mean... No, yeah, it's been permanently decommissioned. We can't even open the gate. We can open the inner gate. But where's the fun in that? to see this thing working. There's the button panel. I'm trying to look for a hint of the brand. So it doesn't even appear to be one. Well, Again, I really hope at some point they get this thing working again because I would like to because I would like to ride it. All right, 4.15 p.m. Here's the Watson Library. And well, let's just confirm right now that that center stacks elevator, it has been permanently decommissioned. So unless I decide to come back here and maybe sometime on another day, I might ask to see if they can unscrew that outer gate on the four and a half center. And maybe they can let me in and take some pictures of it, but not going to get a ride. And hold on a second, I just saw something. Yep, there's the... Over there. Yeah, way down there. We got a long walk ahead of us. Fortunately though, it's all downhill, so that'll make life easy. All right, another update on an elevator. This is the journalism building, and it's renovations are taking place. That's, the elevator is just right inside that entrance there. That sign says stop construction zone, so. The elevator in here is inaccessible.
Hmm. This is the elevator at the Spencer Research Library. University of Kansas. It's like we've got some wet glue on the door close button. Let's go up to four. Here we go. Let's go down to one. This is a nice cab. Hard to believe that I completely forgot about this in 2018. Fixtures, pretty much the same as every other elevator. Montgomery. I gotta get a picture of that. Emergency phone. We are really cutting it close on the hours here. Yeah, we can end down here. Wait a minute. This looks like it used to be something at one point. Okay, so you. Yeah. I'm winded. And you, if you're wondering why I'm winded, five o'clock, don't need that on, 501, and you're wondering, no, it did not take 45 minutes to walk down there. I got about halfway to the car and then realized there was one particular elevator I wanted to get. So I went and got it. And to my surprise, there was a, a security desk. But she let me film the elevator, so all is good there. In any way, we are moving on to Kansas City. Here we go. We are off. Now, we need to get back on I-70, so I'm pretty much just gonna go back the way I came. Five fifteen p.m. We've traveled 228 miles so far. Got my pop refilled. Took a little bit of a detour to do that though, so we're gonna hopefully, there's a liquor store that I wanna stop at. So, see if, cause you know, I gotta try to see if we have some Kansas beer. That's any good. All right, this is the liquor store that I stopped at here, Spirit Liquor. And we got Free State Lager and a Yankee Tank Red Dirt Country Ale. Made right here in Lawrence, Kansas. I don't know. Lawrence, Kansas. Because without beer, we got a Free State Lager. And I'm trying to look for, ah, here it is. Free State Brewing Company, Lawrence, Kansas. So hopefully, another one to, let's see if they're, we'll see if they're any good or not when we get home. Anyway, we, let's get back on the road, because we are, because it is f almost 5.30 already, and there's still a lot in Kansas City that I want to get, and get to Des Moines, Iowa. 
by tonight. Once again, gotta remember to buckle up. That includes the beer this time. Here we go. Next update we'll be getting on I-70 as I got a green light and going. All right, 5.29 p.m. and well, we've pretty much hit the thick of rush hour traffic. cars coming in both directions here but we are about ready to get back on the turnpike and head to Kansas City Here we go. Just going, simply going back the way we came. Hmm. That's different. All right. Looks like our fare is going to be two dollars and twenty-five cents. I'm not going to bother showing the ticket this time. We're going east to Kansas City. We're John, and then. Next update will be when we enter KC or exit the turnpike. Right, 5.42 p.m. and we are coming up on the toll plaza to get off the turnpike as we've reached the end, for the most part anyway. Now, may not necessarily be able to film through this if they have attendance on duty. We'll see when we get there. Cash vehicles pay toll, that's what we're going for. This one has attendance on duty, so I think I'm just going to hide the camera, but keep it rolling. Yep. Uh, this could be a wait. In case you didn't hear, the fare was 225. So with that being said, we're moving. Alright, 
5.53 p.m. We are now entering the Kansas City area. One of these around here is the exit I want to get off at. I think 435 South I know is the one I want to go on, but... No, wait, I don't want North. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it's north. North. Yes, we are going to stop and film some things around here, so. back on I-70. I think we have hit the thick of rush hour traffic. Because I mean, well, you can't see it, but it's behind me. I don't know if this is where I want to go or not. I'm kind of thinking as I go here. I think this is the exit that I want. Yep, this is it. No, no I'm starting to second guess myself on that one. This guy's going kind of slow. I'll update you when we get there. All right, 6 p.m. This is where I wanted to stop, Nebraska Furniture Mart. I originally thought they only had their Omaha location and then I researched them and nope, they got one in Kansas City and they got one in Texas. So anyway, let's go see what they've got for elevators. And I know because I've seen them on YouTube. This is the North Elevator. Nebraska Furniture Mart, Kansas City, Kansas. Button sticks. Let's go up to two. Here we go. Fixtures. That's interesting. Looks like some sort of chain drive holeless system here that we've got. Never, never heard or seen of that. Interesting. Well, that is all. This is the center glass elevator. Oh, 
What floor? Uh, take me up, Scotty. You never know. So many choices. My favorite question is people go, where's the basement? <laughs> South Elevator, Nebraska Furniture Mart in Kansas City, Kansas. Let's go to two. Nice cab. Again, it's a chain drive holeless hydraulic, which is interesting. Got buttons over here. And that's it. All right, that was fun. I got my camera spare battery, so I'll have to charge that when I get to Des Moines. Anyway, let's continue. Roughly 20 minutes later, we are off. Next update will be when we get to the next place. All right, I kind of figured that if I'm only updating you when we get to the destination, that's gonna make for a really boring video. But here we're crossing I-70 again. And we're going south on 435, so we can jog up on 35 and see Oak Park Mall in Overland Park. Because I already have videos of the elevators there, but I just wanna check up on some things and film a few escalators because I didn't do that. Anyway. Just let you watch the road for a while. I knew it. It got modernized. Ick. This is the Dillard South Elevator at Oak Park Mall, Overland Park, Kansas. Innovation. Four is open. Hmm.
fourth floor is closed. But hey, we got up here. The cab is still the same. That big indicator is gone, which is, I wish they would have just left that there, even just for the sake of, you know, the word of which escapes me at the moment. Button goes out. Otis. Well, that is it. All right guys, here we are at Oak Park Mall, 7.10 p.m. I just saw the time, and I teased the idea of going to Independence Mall in Independence, Missouri, but it it's looking like that's not gonna happen today. So from this point forward, we're pretty much just gonna drive straight through to Des Moines. Probably gonna keep the updates to a minimum. After that, the idea is to get there non-stop, if possible, but knowing how much liquid I now have, I don't know if that's going to be possible. So, as you just saw, the Dillard South Mod is finished. And we are moving on. And the nice thing is that I nice thing about here is that I-35 is like easily accessible because we were just on it. So I guess we'll, I guess I'll keep it to, nah, I can't turn here. Dang it. Because that goes right turn only. So I got to figure out how to get out of here. But in any case, I got, I grabbed some dinner. Five Guys. I have not been there in years. They have some of the best burgers I've ever had. That, and I, and I kind of got in and out in five minutes. Still got my bag of fries here because these things are so addicting. Mm. Mm. So I'll be munching on them during this trip. Part of the reason I'm keeping it to a minimum. Anyway, I guess I'll just let you watch me get on to I-35. Maybe, well, maybe I'll film going through downtown, I don't know. With it being dark, I don't think there's going to be much for us to see. Find a comfortable place to put my hand. Bye bye Oak Park. That's Dillard's North right there. They had an international elevator. And and Montgomery G and P escalators, of which I did not get a video of. This is the one I want. Here we go. Here we go, I-35 North. So either the next 
So either the next clip will be passing through downtown KC or at the hotel in Des Moines. Oh dear, I don't know what I just hit, but that did not sound good. By the way, it's also really hard to go non-stop when you're less than a quarter tank of gas, so I think you can figure out where I'm going now. Pit stop. Necessary pit stop. All right, that's it for now. All right, we're up and going again. There's that KC skyline blocked by an abandoned building. There you go. Enjoy. All right. And therefore, that will do it for KC. Next update will be when we get to the hotel in Des Moines. Because I need to drive. I'm tired. I'm whacked. And, ooh, tunnel. little tunnel anyway as I was saying I'm whacked I'm tired I need to focus on driving and therefore I'm not going to update we're just gonna I'm just not even gonna bother making any further updates until we get to the hotel mm, hiccups until we get to the hotel in Des Moines so with that being said That is it. Alright guys, we are checked into the hotel. I am checked into the hotel anyway, there's only one of me again. It's a sleeping in suites in Ankeny, Iowa. I may have enough energy to muster a hotel tour. A room tour but I'm exhausted but before we go before we go in I wanted to show you something don't know how we managed to do that but we traveled exactly 500 miles today so that will reset tomorrow anyway let's go take a look at the hotel let's go finish up in the room all right guys I'm pooped tomorrow is gonna be another big day and we're in the hotel room and Here's just a quick glance. This is not a hotel tour. This is part of the road trip. I think I can muster up enough energy to do a second video for a full room tour here. Okay, we are at the Sleepin' in Suites in Anthony, Iowa. We are at the Sleep Inn, Anthony, Iowa. We are in room 119. This was kind of my no preference option, so there's a story behind that. But first glance at the room, no sign of any directory, so, but we gotta do the usuals. Latch, I don't know what this is, but it stops the door, so got a people, as one particular YouTube channel I follow who does hotel tours regularly, we're, sol we're solid in the security department. Now, here's just a quick pan of the room. 
Something tells me we probably ought to turn on some lights. If I can... Here's one. If I can find it. Turn the sun. Oh, that's handy. On off switch. We'll turn these lights on. So, let's get a better glance, this time with some light. So far, looks pretty nice. Let's dig down into the details. Here's the bathroom. So we got a sink. Forgot something little notice here. The sink looks fairly clean. Fairly modern too. So this is a fairly new property. Just by even just by checking the elevator out, which that will come in a separate video. Soaps, shampoos, pretty pretty basic. Pretty much what you'd expect. Here's the toilet. Looks nice and clean. Especially around the rim here, that's all. That's a good sign. Now, I've seen enough of Dan Bell in another dirty room to check the corners and the crevices and yeah, of course, not the greatest, but some little things in there, but it's passable. It's passable. Overall, the one thing that annoys me particularly about this hotel That is your humidity control, and it ain't even a, it ain't even a, ain't even a fan. So if I take a shower tonight, it's going to be very humid in here, and that I don't like because it festers mold. Shower, mm. looks all right so far. Shower curtain this looks like it's in decent shape. No signs of mold. Uh, eh. I don't like the look of that, but walls look fairly clean. Yeah, ooh, we got some hairs in here. That's not a good sign. Oh, uh-oh. That's alive. Yeah, I don't know. I might I might reconsider taking a shower tonight here. So this this tub is this tub is not as clean as it looks. So these guys look passable. Shower curtain heads look passable. Shower heads in a decent condition. <sighs> I'm tired. So that's probably why I'm kind of struggling to find words. Toilet's clean. Yeah, shower, the shower could use some help. We'll just throw that out there. A little fringe around the carpet. Mm. Okay, so... Bathroom is pretty good for the most part. Not, not entirely convinced on the tub that it's actually in decent shape. Or sorry, or that it's clean. Just by taking a look out here, everything seems to be clean. That's just some normal wear and tear. You got the standard AC unit, which is on heat for some reason. Not probably because it's in between. It's October, so that explains a few things. Overall, the room looks fairly nice, fairly clean on the edges. You got the TV. TV's solid. You got a mini fridge with the light inside. They don't get that very often. Microwave. Looks, mm. eh, I could use some work. Someone, microwave's not the best. Standard choice hotel cups, coffee makers. So far so good. Let's, see, let's just check the ice bucket, see if that's clean. We're good here. Cups look clean, we're in good shape. So far, so good. I think I'll definitely be getting ice today. I, 
don't think this ch this chair's just something to store stuff on, so nothing special there. Let's take a look at one of the beds here. Here's the bed. Looks fairly clean on the outside. This one looks decent, no signs of hair. We got pillows. One, two, three, four. All appear to look clean just by examining them. These two are good. Yeah, pillows are good. Headboard's fairly new. Looks not, looks in good. Looks like it's in good shape. So this bed is so we have one passable bed for tonight, which is a good sign. Mm. Just one hair. But otherwise, this bed's in pretty good shape and pretty clean. All right, my battery died, and as you can see, I've got the new one charging right now. So as I was saying earlier, we were doing this bed next. Kind of tore it apart a little, but once again, it looks like they've done a really good job of the cleanliness of this bed. Props to them on that. Pillars and pillows, pillars, I'm tired. Pillars. <laughs> Pillows are nice. Nice and clean. These are all in good shape. Oop, hold on a second. That's just lint, never mind. Yeah, we're in, yeah. We're good on pillows. Let's I'm gonna pull one out and sample it here if we can. This is really hard to do one-handed. There we go. Nice and clean. Okay, bed's a solid pass for the night. Other than that, just looking around the corners of the rooms here, just for minor details. All seems good here. Overall, just kind of the general theme of this room. I did notice something as I kind of tried to set some stuff up while my battery was dead, and that's, this is really the only accessible power outlet. And that kind of annoys me, because I don't like, I don't, I know I will probably leave something behind if I plug it into that one and hide it. Or down there. Speaking of which, I forgot about the desk chair, which seems to be in decent shape. Under there is clean. Ooh, ooh. No, that was me. I, I thought they forgot to empty the trash, but that's what I threw in there. So, another, so. Yeah, I only charged that battery for like five minutes, so that's why it ran out so quickly. But anyway, my overall impression of this room is a solid four out of five. There are some cleanliness, minor cleanliness issues in the, oop, I forgot about this closet here. Standard closet, got an ironing board, got some hangers, dirty laundry bag, iron, no no spare no spare sheets. Probably because there isn't a pullout in this room, which is understandable. So there's that. So as I was saying, overall cleanliness of the room. I think the shower could just simply be washed out, but it really did not leave a good impression first impression that's real that's really the only negative here but overall it seems like they've done a really good job putting this place in tip-top shape to sleep tonight so maybe I can raise it to a four I'd say four and a half I'd probably say four and a half stars out of five anyway with that being said 
Thanks for watching, and ooh, 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 I just know, I just remembered something that I discovered as I was charging the battery. Either I haven't stayed in enough, or you don't see this in hotels very often. The window opens. They'll be able to let in some fresh air tonight. Anyway, with that being said, thank you for watching. That is it. This is the elevator at the Sleep in Ankeny, Iowa. Let's go up to three. Here we go. Let's go down. Let's go down to one. This is a nice elevator. Basic fixtures, fun down there. It's got a great motor. Doesn't say floor, that's interesting. Let's have a listen. Let's have a listen. if this is MRL. I that I doesn't sound like it is. And that is it. Actually, you know what? I should probably see if I can find the machine room for this thing. Send you up. Without me in it. room but I'm pretty certain it's a conventional hydraulic so with that being said I don't know if this is going to be in two parts or not so if this is part one of two thanks for watching stay tuned for part two it'll be coming out soon all right day two of the road trip Possibly part two. And I'm thinking already today, I'm probably going to need to spend a little bit more time sticking to the script as to, so to speak, as to what I wanted to do. So I had originally planned to go out to some bell tower in Jefferson. And I also wanted to consider visiting the three malls in Des Moines area, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen today. I'm just gonna have to stick to the my original plans. But anyway, the mileage counter has been reset to zero. I don't know how much we're actually going to use that again because of last night. 9 a.m. start, so here we go. I actually enjoyed having getting a chance to sleep in for once. On one of these trips.
What? Not funny? Okay, yeah, I don't blame you. It's early in the morning. I'm tired. I'm still a little tired, but... I think my car agrees, because it's... It is 43 degrees out. It is chilly. Okay. First stop. Gas station. You get some... You get a little pop to get some caffeine and we'll go from there. As you can probably already tell, this hotel is very difficult to get to. Um, yeah. We ain't even on the main roads yet. This is a major road. Casey's, here we go. All right, first stop of the day, and then we'll start from here. All right, so I did a little something different this time. I actually got a Mountain Dew slushy. So we'll see if that's any. I've had these before, so they're pretty good. Anyway, maybe a little extra boost, a little extra texture to it. Let's get out of here. Yeah, that is a very difficult hotel to get to. Let's go. Right turn on reds. Right turn on red. We are going to continue north on I-35. To Ames. Where we will first stop will be Iowa State. There's a couple of elevators I want to check up on down there. Obviously, I'm going to revisit Coover Hall. Because that's probably the best elevator that I filmed down there. And then, I, and then the, agro, the agronomy building I know has a flush line elevator, so I'm going to check that guy out. And then I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to try to remember what else it was that I... Yeah, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, there, I think there was at least one more vintage elevator that I wanted to check out, but I can't remember where it was at. Anyway, with that being said, we are on the road now and we're heading north to Ames. 907, here we go. All right, we are parked and I just remembered what the other elevators, the other building was. It was LeBaron Hall because I know they had some vintage elevators that I wanted to check out as well as one that I had an epic fail on when I first visited. Anyway, the t current time's 943. 28 and a half miles into the trip is, well, 28 and a half miles is how far we've traveled so far, so... Let's go to Iowa State and film some elevators. Or remember this elevator. Well, there's more to it than I thought. We're just gonna go up one floor, or half a floor actually. There's something I want to show you. Either as the result of divine intervention or just that I haven't explored the building enough. I don't know how on earth I managed to miss this.
And unfortunately, this looks like a fresh mud. So now I'm a little mad because two years ago, this could have been original. And I would have never even known it because I didn't look for it. I had no idea this was even down here. Well, let's see what we got. Way to keep up with the Iowa State trend of Epic Motors. Yeah, this looks fresh. Because look at this. There was an indicator here. There was a button panel there. That was the that was where the emergency phone was, and now we have this. So yeah, I'm a little I'm a little mad that I missed this. Cap looks like it used to be a vintage elevator at one point, too. All right. Got an epic motor. Don't fail me. Get the down lantern to work. Some maintenance worker like right outside the doorway, so. All right, guys, Coover Hall. Let's go see what we've got for elevators. Oh dear. Crowded there. Moment of truth, it's around the corner to the right. But before we do, well, that's just an exit. I thought that was a stairway. Here's the stairway. So far, so good.
That does not sound good at all. Okay, it's working. Look at this. It's still original. Still epic. There's the phone. Don't think you'll need that. Take a look at this. I'm gonna have to get another ride on this because something really does not sound good here. You know what? I think we'll actually be able to hear it better from the outside, so. Look at these fixtures. Let's listen. Oh no, this sounds really bad. This is really not good. The motor is louder, but it sounds awful going down. I am, I, I've got no words for this. I've got no, I've got nothing. It's still original, but it sounds terrible. I really hope they fix it and not modernize it. I, that's, I'm, I, yeah. All right, that, Again, I have absolutely no words for that in the state that elevator is in. I'm almost thinking I'm going to expedite that video and get it up as soon as possible. Mostly just so if anybody wants to come and film it. Now, I don't think it's going to be original much longer. Oh good, this elevator is still here. Flush line. Here's a cat view. This is nice. 
look at these awesome fixtures. These you don't see every day. Unless you regularly ride this elevator. But I'm talking about fines. And there really is not much down here. And this one sounds like it's in great shape. GMP. There's a focus. Okay. Eh. It still has some shakes and jolts that are a little concerning, but other than that, my camera does not seem to want to focus today. Well, oh, that lights up green. I'll get a little look at that. All right, let's call that good. Going up. Last time I visited this elevator in Truxel Hall, it was low on oil. Let's see if they fixed it, which they probably have, as it's been two years. Easily. Well, Entry level. that's really all I wanted to see here. All right, we are back in the car. So basically, I decided that uploading that one uploading Coover Hall early was not going to be a good idea, and instead, it's just going to go live with the rest of the road trip because I don't want to give any hints of it beforehand. So, with that being said, 11:22 a.m. It's time to head to Iowa City. So here we go. We are off. All right, guys, I had to start completely over with the pop because it appears as though the old cup was leaking. Not to mention also that Mountain Dew slushy that I got tasted awful for some strange reason. So we're starting fresh and we just got standard Mountain Dew with crushed ice. So anyway, let's get on the interstate. All right, I think I'm not even gonna bother filming until we get onto I-35 southbound. All right, it's 11.48 a.m. and we are very behind schedule, so we gotta pretty much just drive straight through to the University of Iowa, and I was hoping to get there by noon originally. Now I think we'll be lucky if we get there by two. So here we are getting back on I-35 south. Really, 
there's just not going to be any further updates until we get to Des Moines. 12.08 p.m. We are heading east on I-80 towards Davenport to go to Iowa City. Try to drive through this non-stop and somewhere along the lines I'm gonna have to figure out how to eat lunch so with that being said I guess we'll just film going on to I-80 and then we'll probably not gonna do any more updates until I get to Iowa City so here we go Alright guys, this isn't exactly an update I wanted to make, but 12.49 p.m. We are somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, but I, for whatever reason, am really not feeling good. And it's pretty much, it's pretty much a decision I don't want to have to make, but I don't think going to the University of Iowa to film elevators is going to be a good idea at this point, so I don't know if I feel like I'm going to throw up, but... I am not going to take that chance, so unfortunately, this is where the journey ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around, I'm going to head back through Des Moines and go home. I'm sorry to have to do this to you guys, but unfortunately, health comes first. And I am very much not feeling good, so. Oh, if I'm feeling better, if we get back to Des Moines, I might stop and check out the three malls for updates, but other than that, this is the end. So anyway, with that being said, thank you for watching. If I do wanna, if I do decide to film any more elevators, I'll probably attach them here, but I think I'm gonna call it I think I'm going to call this a road trip. So, again, thank you for watching. That is all.